Hey guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up, let's go. Enjoy. Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt. Over there is Adam Glenn, and it is Friday, which means that it is our Raw Rundown. Get you caught up on all the big stories of the week uh, for all those people that, you know, just can't, they don't have time to read all the blogs and all the news stories. We are here for you. We are your people. What's up, buddy? Hey, dude. It's very humid in the East Coast right now. Therefore, if you're watching on YouTube and not wearing sleeves, I wanted to try out that look. (laughs) Because <laughs> um, it's hot and nice. But uh, I want to talk to you all about my white party experience and how great it was and how I had such a good time. We're going to get to that on the countdown, obviously, and talk about uh, the white party. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. All right. Let's get to it real fast. Guys, well, read that's, all right. I, was, so it, I wasn't at the white party. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, I figured you'd get to that at some point. <laughs> yeah. I would be like, dude, Adam got to the white party. Why not post about it? I was like, uh, I didn't want to be that guy. I was yeah, I didn't want to be the one posting. It was just me and, you know, Jay-Z hanging out. No big deal. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's get to, <laughs> do you want to do a review yeah. or do you want to get right to it? Yeah, no, I got a, I got an Apple podcast review right here. All right. This one comes from AAJV underscore 16 says the Gary Morgan tell all bring him back. And it was five stars. It said Hollywood Raw is one of my top favorite podcasts. And on my weekly playlist, Adam and Dax have great chemistry and banter and make for great hosts. I've been listening to Hollywood Raw since the, the show rolled out. And the interview with Gary Morgan was one of my favorites. You can tell he has a ton of ton more stories to tell. I'm hoping he'll be back to share more. Keep up the lighthearted, informative entertainment. P.S. I found you guys through the Pat and JT podcast. I remember listening to Dax on 98.5 radio show back when I used to listen to radio. Alicia from Omaha. Yes. Uh, by the way, that Gary Morgan interview was probably one of my favorites as well. You liked him. Yeah. He, he was so good. And if you haven't listened to it, he um, it was a former owner of Splash News, which was one of the biggest paparazzi agencies in the world for a very, very long time. And he just had so many amazing stories about working with Kim Kardashian and all these other big celebs that were doing setups with him. It was really, really, really good. So anyway. Thank you, Alicia. I, Appreciate your time uh, listening and uh, leaving us a review. Appreciate it. You know what's so funny? I got some feedback from that episode from a very one of the, from a very very big person who was mm-hmm. not unha- They weren't unhappy with us. They're like, uh, Gary gave a gave out a little too much dirt in that story. That kind of like fuck. I, I just, heard Kim wasn't happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you heard the same? You heard the yeah, same yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I heard Kim wasn't so pleased with uh, the amount of information Gary shared on our podcast. <laughs> yeah. But Kim, which, come on and uh, fix it. Which I love yeah. that Kim, you know, I'm assuming she sat down and she listened, which is awesome, you know. Can put Kim Kardashian, Hollywood Raw's number one fan. All right, yes. let's do All this. Right. Let's do our raw rundown. We're give you the top 10 stories of the week, starting with number 10. Uh, Ricky Martin getting a divorce. Him and his husband, I, do you say his name, Juan? Yosef? Juan. Yeah, uh, J-W-A-N. That's Juan, right? Yeah. Juan. Yeah. Juan Joseph are getting divorced, divorce, um, and they are saying it is with love, respect, and dignity. Uh, this is after six years of marriage. They've decided to end their marriage, and uh, and they, they're saying that they're going to, you know, honor their children and, you know, make this a very peaceful transition in their life. They gave out a statement to people on Thursday, and it says, with our greatest desire is now to continue having a healthy family dynamic and relationship centered on peace and friendship, to continue to joint upbringing of our children, preserving the respect and love we have for each other um so yeah I, this is i mean i didn't i'm not gonna lie i didn't follow ricky martin's life too much um so i, I think i covered it when he got married and now i'm covering it when he got where well, he's getting a divorce good looking couple though i mean i've got i gotta say good looking dudes getting divorced uh i didn't know the age difference you know it's a pretty decent age difference which oh, what I'm, is the age difference well ricky martin's 51 uh this guy's 38 okay so here's the weird thing they do not look like there is any age difference so ricky martin looks no. really good 
Yeah, it's crazy. Exploring. He looks like he's 38 as well. I just want to know, again, what the cocktail is. What do they actually take to look so good? What does Brad Pitt actually do? And I'm not you know mad. There's, I don't there's judge. Gotta be, there's got to be like some kind of Botox Found or abuse. something. There's just yeah. no way. I just want to know exactly what they do because these guys, even the hair color, I, I don't think they're getting their hair colored every week. Mm-hmm. I just don't think their hair turns color. I just want to know what they do. And again, I don't judge. I would just love to know. I think that you would be surprised how much these people like if you've got endless money and you're not on the road or you're not like going to a nine to five day, you have time to get your hair dyed. You know what I'm saying? Like we, so you, think you that, and I are running around trying to do a thousand things. And so we don't have time to dye our hair black every day. So you think, I mean, obviously for them, someone like Brad Pitt has someone come to his house every day, every week, at least once a week, coloring his hair. Yeah, why not? I mean, I think the longer hair you have, you don't have to worry. But if you've got short hair and you're trying to keep the the sides looking dark, yeah, you're going to have to have someone come and touch up your your, your hair. But it's also because you're getting photographed all the time and you're on a, in a pu- very public forum. Yeah, you you have to maintain that appearance. It's funny because I remember one day Kevin Hart, I ran into him and he was, I w- he wasn't all gray by any means, but there was a lot of gray. Um, and then you see him on, you know, premieres and he's so, he, it's all black. It's from his beard to yeah. his hair. And I was like, oh, he's definitely getting it touched up and looks good. But you know, I I'm guess telling you, if, he, I, if I had if I had endless time, yeah, I would. I would maybe dye my hair, but I don't like, I got like a pretty good gray patch going into my beard, but I've done the like beard dye stuff and then it grows out in like two days when I shave. I'm like, this is so dumb. It's such a waste of time. I've never met him. Actually, you know what? I did. I met Ricky Martin once. It was right after Hurricane Sandy. And this is when there was no electricity in New York. Do you remember this hurricane when there was no I mean, it was wiped out in New York. There was no power in New York for like a week. It was chaos. And okay. I saw him walking on the streets and he talked to me. He was actually really nice. And it, it was rare because you just don't see him. It was the only time I ever saw him. But yeah, that's my Ricky Morris. All right. Number. Wait, wait, wait. Did he didn't talk? He didn't say anything to you? No, he did. He talked to me. Um, he talked to me a decent amount. I think actually the video I got of him, they he was kind of caught off guard by it. And the company I was working for sort of turned the video a little negative. Mm, um, gotcha. So um, I so really wasn't well. about that. It, he was nice to me, but you know, the next day Ricky probably wasn't the happiest with me, but I didn't have any say in that. It was the people I was employed by. All right. Number nine, number nine, Michael Jordan sharing his thoughts on his son, Marcus's relationship with Larsa Pippen, you know, recently, uh, Larsa and Marcus have been talking about it and it made it sound like all is hunky dory in the family that the, the, that the Jordans are accepting her and that it was kind of weird at the beginning, but now all is great. Well, apparently the feelings aren't mutual. Michael Jordan was, uh, uh, he was papped out. Where was he? New York. I think you know France, was? overseas. Was he overseas? Yeah. Um, yeah. He was out walking around and one of the paparazzi ended up asking him like, Hey, what do you think? What what's your or do you approve of this relationship between Marcus and Larsa Pippen? And he says no. And and you know you're kind of like, oh wait, did he actually say no? Did he not understand the question? Like what happened? They re ask the question, and you see him again, like shake his head, no. Which I'm, I don't. I was really surprised that he would even comment on this. It's his son. At the end of the day. Him saying no is going to cause like a really weird tension inside the family. Do you not agree? I mean, can you imagine your parents saying no to a very like public relationship that you're in? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's tough to say because Larsa Pippa came on this podcast and she was so great, so nice. I like her. I like her as mm-hmm. a person. She's very cool. You start to question Marcus Jordan because Larsa, let's be real. She knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. You know, she knows what to do. She took the Kim Kardashian playbook. She knows what she's doing. Now, when you have someone like Marcus Jordan, who is a little bit, a lot younger, who I don't know if he's wise enough to realize how he's being played in this. But maybe or she really, they could genuinely be really likes him. Yeah, they could be. I, they could be. I'm not saying anything. There's, there's different ways to think about it. Will we ever know the truth? No. Which, but I am surprised that Michael Jordan actually spoke up because I've been in situations where you ask a question, and he might not have heard the answer and just said no, 
or just mm-hmm. thought he was playing around. But then when they re-asked it and he said no. I just I think with all the questions people don't ever answer, for him to choose to answer that one, like they could have asked it, he could have just gotten his car and left. Like no answer, no nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But for him to respond to it and say, no, I don't approve of it, that's crazy. Like, he must really not like her to say that out loud. Yeah, PR-wise, he's probably saying, well, someone else was asking me another question. I said no to them, not no to that answer. I don't know. I mean, or he's (laughs) just like, Scotty's my boy, so I got to... No, him and Scotty don't like each other. Oh, they don't? No, no. They had a bit... They're not... I think they're civil because they're adults, mm-hmm. but I think there there is definitely some um, turbulence, I guess you could say, in that relationship. That is, but it's your son, bro. Like, oh, it's so awkward. So 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 awkward. awkward. Crazy, crazy. Yikes. Uh, moving on, number eight. Uh, number eight, Logan Paul got engaged this week. Uh, him and his uh, his fiance Nina Agdal, who is a very very famous model, uh, they were over in um, Italy, and I guess he proposed to her on Lake Como, the very famous lake over there that uh, like George Clooney has a big old house on. Uh, and we got finally got photos of the ring. It is freaking huge. He got I I. I I have no idea how big it is. I haven't seen anyone actually report on the size because we've just seen some photos. I got to guess. I mean, what what do you think? Have you seen the photos of the ring? I mean, Logan Paul has a, like a five, one to $5 million Pokemon card or something like that. So I, yeah. I would expect him to I'm go sure nuts he's on it. He's got a lot of money. He's very smart with his money. Living in Puerto Rico for tax reasons. Like he, Logan is, when it comes to business, he's very on top of it. I, I don't know. I, my guess... Uh, seven hundred seven fifty. Seven hundred seven fifty. What? Thousand dollar ring. Oh no! Million dollar ring. No, this is this is going to be like a three million dollar ring, bro. You think he spent three million dollars on a ring? This thing is huge. It is huge. It's such a liability, though, walking around with a three million dollar ring. So what I think a lot of celebs will do is they will buy the the real ring. And then they get a clone of it and it's a fake ring so that they can still walk around and not be worried about $3 million on their hand. Interesting. They do have the real ring, but then they have like a, you know, just a, a, a knockoff of it so that if someone was to come up and hold a gun to their head and they go, here, take my ring and you just give them the fake ring because what does it matter? You know, the real one, you have it. So yeah. it's at home inside of a, a lock safe. Uh, happy for them. Logan's actually a really – Logan's a cool guy. Nina's actually awesome as well. She's fun. She's cool. I saw this go in the distance. You know, you saw Logan kind of stepping back from the public eye, at least from like mm-hmm. being the social party guy. He really kind of went back to Nina after wrestling and made sure to take time with her. And it's weird because his best friend or that he does a podcast with, Mike Malak, is such like a party guy and so – woman obsessed uh woman obsessive he likes going out and mingling and meeting women where logan is not like that you mm-hmm. saw him co- and again it's, it's cool for logan as a guy from where's he from ohio or somewhere somewhere ran- randomly to say hey i'm with a sports illustrated i'm gonna marry a sports illustrated swimsuit model it's mm-hmm. pretty awesome nina's great <laughs> super cool and i used to i don't know she's she's awesome just a cool girl so, all right, all right, moving on. Happy for that. Moving on, number seven. Uh, number seven, uh, Kevin Costner really wants his ex Christine out of the house. <laughs> he filed more paperwork this week, basically saying, "Look, we had a prenup. You said you'd be out. I need you out of the property no later than July thirteenth." Um, and basically is saying, like, I, I don't care. She filed some paperwork back saying, look, I, I need to be set up financially before I move out. I need to make sure that I can sustain my own life and make sure that uh, like my kids are set up, that everything is good. If you are not going to make, you know, live by my or you, if you're not going to make my demands, then I'm not going to leave the house. Well, it sounds like uh, a judge actually sided with him and she is going to have to get out sooner than later. Um, and this is obviously a big deal. I feel like this divorce has gotten so nasty so quickly. Um, and I wonder what really went down. Like for them to just be now like at each other's throats. Dax, let me ask you this. So they're getting divorced, obviously, and you're seeing all their stuff about their private life come forward. And you're seeing what kind of guy Kevin Costner is. And I'm saying 
it's listen they're, they're breaking up and break up but you're seeing sort of uh the man behind the mask you know the real okay. kevin costner does it change your impression of kevin costner um like do you look at him situation? different or no. even if you're a director would you cast him in the same role based on what you're seeing in this kind of situation. So I think if there was domestic abuse or something like that, then I would say yes. Um, two people falling out of love and not wanting to be married anymore. Not really. I mean, I just feel like I would hope people wouldn't change their opinions on me if I had a divorce or something going on in my life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because everyone goes through shit and has to deal with it. If there was more involved, then yes, I would say I would look at him different if there was some other crazy narrative here. Interesting thing that Kevin Costner also did is that he reduced his what was ex-wife's credit card limit to $30,000 after he discovered that she charged him for over $100,000 worth of legal and accounting services, um, some documents say. So he's like going, all right, I'm going to change all the credit cards. You're gonna, your limit's going to go down and... You know what I was most surprised about? Did you see how much his property is at like this? Uh, where is it again? It's not. It's not like Montecito. It's up north um, in California. It was like a hundred and forty-five million dollar property. That's insane. Good God, how did this guy make that much money? I don't understand what he did that he made all his money. I mean, he, he did some. He, I mean, he did he what, had a lot of films? huge movies. At, at one point, though, he was like the highest paid actor. I think he's one of those people that gets $20 million in a movie no matter what. Yellowstone has brought in a ton of money for him. Waterworld, I think actually he got like back end on that and made a, a, just a shitload of money there too. Wait, by the way, didn't Waterworld suck? I loved Waterworld. You loved Waterworld? I loved Waterworld. I thought Waterworld was terrible. It clearly crazy. did well. They have an entire like – Universal area Disney. devoted to, to it at Universal Studios where they do the stunt show, the whole thing. So clearly I wasn't the only person that loved Waterworld. I'm surprised that Universal still does the stunt show around Waterworld. Like I understand the Indiana Jones one, but mm-hmm. Waterworld of all movies, really? Dude, it, was, I just... it was good. Oh, he had, so he had weird. gills, dude. Come on. <laughs> number six. <laughs> uh, number six. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Gigi Hadid seen hanging out all weekend together in the Hamptons. Uh, so it's rekindling all these rumors that they're dating. The, the alleged couple were seen um, at a 4th of July party hosted by the Tao Group founder Mark Packer in the Hamptons on Saturday night, as well as uh, another party in Bridgehampton. What's Bridgehampton, by the way? It's another – it's part of the Hamptons. It's just an area, but very – that's where – actually, Bridgehampton is where um, Michael Rubin, who had the white party, which we're going to get into, that's where he was. Very gotcha, expensive. Gotcha. So there's a lot of conflicting reports here. A lot of people are saying, look, like, yes, they're hanging out, but they now roll in the same, like, group of friends and that they are just friends. Other people are saying, no, they had energy that looks like they're back together. So to be honest, I have no idea what's going on. I, I could see them rolling in the same group of friends at this point. Um, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. common that you see Leo hanging out with a, like an ex-girlfriend or an ex-fling, but I feel like with Gigi, she really is one of the the top socialites in the world. She's a, you know, obviously well-known supermodel, socialite, so I feel like she goes to the same parties he's going to go to at this point. I will say this about Gigi. I don't know her. I don't know her personally, but I've met her a few times, and she's very, very cool. Like, she's just cool. So I think Leo might like a, a model who's also mm-hmm. a celebrity, who's also cool, who might just get it. Like she doesn't judge Leo for what he's into. He's just – that's what he does. But yeah, it's – I don't know. Are we ever going to see them in public? I don't know. If, I wonder if we'll, I, we, we, I, I don't think we will ever see them affectionate. At least Unless if they, ever hook they up actually start dating. I think at this point they went through like a fling – and they're probably trying to figure out, are they something more? But I see the fact that she has a kid. That kind of throws a weird wrench into the whole situation because she has a kid and he is not like the I want to be a dad and hang out with a kid kind of person, it, in my opinion. And maybe he could completely change my mind but he kind of seems like he wants to be able to travel and roam the world and not have any, you know, 
not be tied down anywhere. So I feel like that is a little strange for him. Yeah. Um, but pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Uh, Leo is just the man. And I think she also knows it's not exclusive. He's also always been seen with other girls. So yeah. they're doing their thing. Number five. Number five, there was a viral video that went around about Jackie Chan, and it looks like he was sitting down with his daughter watching these old clips of his movies, and he was getting super emotional, and they're both crying together and all this stuff, and then come to find out, not actually his daughter. Um, and he basically, it was like they duped the internet, and apparently his actual daughter, he has been uh, estranged from for many, many years. Come to find out that his daughter, I believe it, her name is Etta Nungkok Chok Lam. Uh, that's a hard name to say. Sorry about that. Um, he, she's accused him of abandoning her, claiming the fact that he, he's, uh, or I'm sorry, claiming he hates the fact that she's a lesbian. And that is why he disowned her and that uh, she has actually struggled with money for a very long time because she's been living on the streets with her, her girlfriend and all this stuff, even though he's worth like $400 million or some ridiculous number like that. And so the Internet went from loving Jackie Chan, loving this this emotional video to basically blasting him for being a horrible father and for turning his, his back on his daughter and being a homophobe. Not good, Jack. Not good. Chan. Not good. I mean, everyone's there. Yeah, it's rough. His real daughter is really kind of came after him about this. It's just, it's sort of like an insane move to even do because when you watch the video, and if you didn't know, the first time you see, you actually start to sympathize with Jackie Chan. You start to, you know, appreciate him kind of watching this stuff. And then you realize it's not what you think. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what? What were you even thinking doing something like this? What were you yeah. thinking? It's insane. It's, it's an really insane weird. thing to do. I don't understand but what the point. I think. Of this I was. think. So I think this girl, she's an actress, but I think they were in some movie together. So I don't know if just the internet turned it and said, "Oh, that's his daughter," and like made it up, and that's not what he okay. initially intended for. But it spiraled quickly, and then to find out, oh, he actually has a terrible relationship with his daughter, and here's why. That's the side that I feel like it turned really poorly on him. Yeah, it's um, that's a good way to think of it, Dex, that maybe the internet is the one who turned. And again, it's sad. It's crazy in the past few years. We just hear, hey, the, we, the media does stories like the internet says this, the internet said, you know, and it's all it is is storyline from a reporter trying to look for maybe an angle and have like a few people on Twitter responded like this. And this is, so we say like those few people on Twitter are actually considered the internet. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say? A hundred percent. Yeah. It's okay. like three people are the internet at sometimes. And I, I get caught up in that every once in a while. I'll see something. And I'm like, Oh wait, what? This is nuts. And then you re- realize it's, it's re- being reported one place. It may not even be true. Sure. All right. Number four. Number four, Leandro De Niro Rodriguez, grandson of Robert De Niro, dies at the age of 19. This was a big story this week. His mother, uh, Drina, uh, Drina De Niro, yes, I think that's how you say her name, um, posted on Monday on Instagram saying, I don't know how I'm going to live without you, but I'll try to go on and spread love and light and that you made me feel in getting to be your mama. So we, you were so deeply loved and appreciated, and I wish that love alone could have saved you. Um, so they found him earlier this week. Um, De Niro put out a statement, obviously, saying that it is with immeasurable shock and sadness that we say goodbye to our beloved son, Leo. We thank you for the outpouring of love and support and ask that we are given privacy at this time. So obviously this is a huge deal. Um, just sad, 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 sad. I want to say there was another story that came out. Well, actually, before that, go, before you even get to the next story, it was if people were wondering how he died. Um, I, you know, D- uh, Drena De Niro says it was fentanyl-laced pills. Yeah. So um, just sad. But there was another story. Dax, go on. Uh, that was that was what I was trying to remember was what exactly had killed him. And then there was another story, yes, of another big celebrity dying. Uh, Coco Lee, uh, dead at the age of 48 by suicide. Um, she was the voice of Mulan in the Mandarin version of Disney's Mulan. Became very, very famous. She was a big singer. Uh, but this story broke this week that she had um, committed suicide. She, I guess it sounds like 
by her sisters was just very depressed and sought some professional help, but her condition just started deteriorating over the last few months and she ultimately took her own life. Um, but she was, she performed an Oscar nominated song, a love before time for the crouching tiger hidden dragon. I, she was just a really big deal. Um, and so I wanted to mention that story, but uh, she was only 48. So anyway, uh, that was a yeah. sad story That's this sad. week. Ooh, depressing stuff, man. Yeah, well, this one's not much better. Number three. Uh, number three. Oh, yeah, this Heather Locklear story. So uh, if you guys have been online and seen this, the latest photos and video of Heather Locklear looking just completely out of it. It reminds me a lot of who was it a few months back that we saw videos and photos, not Amanda, Amanda Bynes. Oh, no, I... there was there was someone else walking around like barefoot, not Brittany. I'm trying to think because it's making me mad. It's sad that we see there's this happens often. I know. Anyway, Heather Locklear, there's this like paparazzi video of her in Malibu, and she's outside of this like building, and she is walking around she's talking to herself she she looks very disheveled um she's walking along the like ledge of this building and then the video she sits down on the steps and she like pulls out a planner and it looks like she's having a full conversation with someone but she's not on the phone and it looks like she's like having a conversation with a ghost and so it, it's very alarming for a lot of people um you know she she has dealt with a lot of stuff over the years, substance abuse, mental health issues. And so I think this video is freaking a lot of people out. And I hate these mental, mental uh, health issue stories. Like, I just want people to get help. And I think sometimes, unfortunately, a story like this has to come out for people to jump into action. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if it necessarily needs to be so public. However, I think the people in her life see this now everyone kind of knows what's happening and they can jump in and go, okay, we need to have, there's clearly a problem. How can we help her? Yeah. The video is, I mean, you could, it's pretty much everywhere. I recommend someone kind of check it out. It is disturbing. And it's, you know, it, it's kind of crazier. Cause I don't I think I told her, maybe we even spoke about it, Dax. I was considering reaching out to Heather Locklear and I don't know a person I was going to go to her team to see, if she would come on the podcast because I every time I've met her, I really liked her. She was just fun. Yeah, she's cool. She was type. She was the type of girl who, when I say this, I hope you understand when I say this. But she was the type of girl who who gets it. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Do you understand yeah, yeah, when yeah. I say that? Like gets. Was, are you talking about like the Hollywood gets Hollywood? Just gets life, but get, what well, doesn't get life? But uh, gets Hollywood. Like she's she's not. It's not an illusion to her. It's 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 re it's she understands mm -hmm. the business. She understands the and I didn't know she's sixty one years old. She's actually good friends with Jillian Barbary and Is who she? we've had who we've had on the podcast before. And I, I swear I saw photos of them hanging out like a couple weeks back and she looked she looked normal in all those photos. So I don't know what what's happened, but I guess again, if this is, you know, mental health issues that could swing in a day. You, you just Let me ask you this, Dex. And I, and I, I, I say this, is there any chance and you, and I say this to you because you have looked at these photos and videos before, mm -hmm. is there any chance that she was just kind of in her own world that day? Like, I mean, I think we've all had those moments where we're just like talking to herself and just kind of just had a bad day and you're just kind of venting to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Just like in your own head and just kind of messing around. Is there any chance like there was that element or it's like, I want to say yes, list. but it looks so erratic that it's hard for me to say like, it looks like a full conversation with someone who's not there, you know? Okay. Um, and that's what just makes me a little nervous for her. Um, I hope, you know, I hope that she gets the help that she needs and, you know, if we're all sitting here and maybe she, you know, it'd be hilarious if she was like, literally, she pulls back her and she's like, oh, I had earbuds in that day. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, I, that's I don't, a I don't, you, you, don't, you don't see anything. No, I, I don't think she's on having conversation. She just, she looks too disheveled to make this look normal. Well, I'm surprised no one, this came out a few days ago, and I'm surprised there hasn't been much response from this set of photos and videos from her end. No one's Well, the funny part is. So the photos that actually got a lot of attention were her and it says she was 
balancing herself along the edge of a tall office building in Malibu. And it literally looks like the way the photos are cropped, it looks like she could be standing on a 13 story building ready to jump. Like, yeah. And then I saw one photo that wasn't cropped and it's the, she's up like maybe six feet. I wouldn't even say a, six feet. There's it's a like dumpster that. right there. I'm like, yeah. Wow. You guys really made that look a lot worse than it really is. Sure. And I know this from working with the outlets. Sometimes, you know, I send in a video and the outlets will ask me something about it. And they're like, how do we make this more of a juicy headline so we could try to sell your content? And I get it. It's, it's just a business. Or it's in sales. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's what you got to do. So hopefully she's okay because Heather Locklear has always been very cool and nice. So I appreciate her for always being like that. Number two, Dex. Number two, your big party this weekend that you didn't hit up. Uh, The Uh, white party happened this weekend, which is the biggest party right around the 4th of July. This is Michael Rubin's party. He is, is he the CEO, the founder, whatever, of Fanatics? The owner. Yeah, the owner of Fanatics. They own all the, if you want to know that, do do you know what Fanatics is, Dex? Of course. We have deals with Fanatics over at Triple Do you? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Fanatics is basically has all the rights to uh, all the the sports teams and players and all the stuff. So they sell all the like merchandise. Like if you if you see a jersey, uh, you want to get like a jersey of someone, they're normally the ones selling it. All the fan gear, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so he has his big white party in the Hamptons, and freaking everyone shows up. Jennifer Lopez, Ben Affleck, Beyonce, Jay Z, Tom Brady. Uh, James Corden, uh, Kevin Hart. I mean, literally everyone was everyone. at this party. Yeah. Justin Bieber. I, I could I could honestly go at Kim Kardashian, Lala, Haley Bieber, Kendall Jenner. I mean, I could name everyone that was there, but we might be a while. Usher performed, DJ Khaled, Travis Scott, Jack Harlow, Leo was there, Kevin Durant. Um, Neo performed as well, and it's just like the biggest party, and it looks hella fun. It's all like outdoor. That's his. Ma- is that his mansion, or is it just it's like a house. rented mansion? No, it's his house. He li- that's his house. Lives there. Yeah. Jeez. Um, yeah, to have that type of real estate in Bridgehampton, I think the house is what fifty or sixty million, and that's just one of his houses because he also has a place in the city that's roughly about the same price, maybe a little bit more. He actually lives in the building. He has like the the crazy penthouse. And it's not even a penthouse. It's like two floors. I don't know if it's a two floors or one floor. It's probably two floors of a beautiful brand new building um, where Ryan Seacrest lives, right? And overlooks mm. the West Side Highway. So it has, you know, the guy throws infamous parties. Um, I. Why, why do you think up. all these celebs want to go to this party? Like, what is because it about this party? Status. Um, it's a. It's. I think there's a big part of status. I think also they know it's going to be top of the line. They know that the people, everyone in the room is someone who matters. There's no riffraff. There's every single person in the room is someone who matters to the point where my friend who was there, Mm -hmm. I, I was invited to the party and I fucking blew it because I forgot. I'm so, I'm so pissed at myself. I forgot it was an all white party. So I showed up in blue and they wouldn't allow me in. <laughs> and I was so You're pissed such an off. idiot. <laughs> I was like, guys, come on, man. I forgot. And then I was like, I, there was no marshals open where I could get a white outfit. So I was I was so screwed and I ruined it. I just blew it and I had to pay like an $80 Uber just get back to the Target where I parked. <laughs> um, I'm so mad. But uh, the Hamptons, I, I, everyone who's never been there is so insanely expensive. But here's what I know about the party. So the party was very, very hard to get into. People are limited to plus one, plus twos. Um, I mean, uh, like they actually, I'm sorry, they couldn't even bring like plus two. Some people are just like them. There was not even like the bodyguards weren't even allowed mm-hmm. to come in with them. Now, Jay Z and Beyonce, maybe they were allowed to have their bodyguards there with them. There was a lot of security there. The way they did it. Actually, Jay-Z and Beyonce were the only people that were sort of like when they walked in, they were sort of ushered into like a section of the party. And then they were like the king and queens of the party where they never left their section. You had to like go up to their section. They just never left their their crown, their throne. Um, but well, Because even they're Di- still famous among famous people. Sure. But know. even like Leo DiCaprio, 
was walking around the party, like without a mask on, just hanging out normally, which he never does. That's something that he never, he just doesn't do that. Everyone was there. And it's funny, you try to think of who the biggest celebrity that was there. I mean, obviously, you had Kim Kardashian there, Jay Z and Beyonce. I would kind of maybe say Mbappe, the soccer player, was Dude, there. Dude, I know. I saw um, Mbappe there. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. So that was pretty insane. You know, but imagine, think about Messi walking through that party. People have lost <laughs> Next their year. damn minds. Next year, Messi's in Miami. There's no, he, he will definitely be there. When people were taking helicopters to the party, they're greeted at the helicopter with women with uh, uh, tequila shots, like 1942 bottles of tequila shots, and like an uh, SUV service to bring them to the party. The party was catered by Cucina Alba, which is like one of the hottest spots in uh, New York Spit in New York City. Also, Lucali, which you can't even you can't go to Lucali. It's it's a pizza place. It's not they have every they have a few other things, but it's in Brooklyn. But it's a place where they don't take reservations, so you have to be there, I don't know, like two hours before they open at 3 o'clock. The only people that really kind of get reservations or kind of get, you know, or big-name celebrities kind of get hooked up. Nobu was there. And then they had a tent where they made it a club at the end of the night. So Tao made it uh, a tent into a club at the end of the night. But before that, they actually had Neo and Usher. The rules of the party was last year they thought the party got a little ratchet. And when I mean ratchet, it just got crazy on stage. They had – like too many rappers come up and their friends and their entourage. It just became like craziness. And they wanted this year to be more casual, more kind of classy. Um, but we hear about all the celebrities in the room, but there wasn't, there was also like a lot of billionaires there. Like there was the guy from um, Eric Schwartz from Google was there. You had Tony Khan, the, the people in the Jackson, um, Jackson, well, Jack, like there was a lot of billionaires in the room that no one was talking about. Um, women, I, I know personally, I had a few, I wouldn't say a few, I had two uh, celebrities that asked mm-hmm. if they, you know, I kind of reached out on their behalf if they go to the party and they were just like, yeah, no, we're good. So here's a question. Would you, a party like this, would you take your 17 year old daughter? Only she wore a mask. Only what? Only if she wore a mask. <laughs> So Ben Affleck and, and J-Lo showed up with Serafina, which is Ben's daughter with Jen Garner. And I was just like, I don't know if I would take my kid to a party like this because, you know, there's going to be filled with drugs and weed and all this kind of stuff. I'm not sure I'd want to take her. I'd bring my kid to the party. And honestly, they're 17, so they're not they're not dumb about what's going on. But also this party was I don't think this party was. I mean, I'm sure there was some people smoking weed there, but there's also a lot of billionaires in the room, booze. I mean, I think it's just a it's a it's a safe environment to them to see like the names that are there. Now it's funny, you know, Michael Rubin does these parties, and the next day they really he releases all the photos because they get all the attention. There was some backlash saying like, "Hey, all these celebrities in the room, okay, great," and you had all the top of line obviously showing off this multi million dollar lifestyle and what the 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 rich are doing. But there's no money raised for a charity, you know. Like yeah. maybe you could have did this somehow and kind of, hey, how about you guys all put money together and try to put it towards an organization or some sort of charitable aspect. There's also a lot of athletes there, but there's a lot of athletes who didn't go. So how do you decide which athletes are on the cusp of that get to go and don't get to go? I um, mean, the, the guest list is crazy. I want to know how many people see Serafina walking around and think it's Jen Gardner. She looks just like her mom. It'd she be like. Does. It'd be like Ava, you know, Reese Witherspoon's daughter. If you saw Ava there, you would think it's Reese because they look identical. And so it's kind of funny when you see Ben and he's got J-Lo on one arm and Serafina on the other. It looks like he's got Jen and Jen. (laughs) It's so weird. I did hear one story about it. There was a a female ESPN reporter Mm -hmm. that everyone was talking about because she was very annoying. I think she's ESPN. Actually, I'll look up the girl now. I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to out her too much. But uh, someone sent me this girl's name. And um, apparently this girl was super annoying at the party and just didn't read the room Mm -hmm. because she just kept going. Hold on. I'm going to tell you what this person does right now. Um, Apparently this person kept going up to people and asking them for photos. Ooh, that's not a good look in a room like that. Uh, You know what? They're not, yeah, they're a TV host reporter. They're represented by a big company. But apparently this person was annoying everyone and asking people for photos. 
And everyone was like, yeah, like this person, like read the room. You shouldn't be here. Yeah. If, if you're walking in there, like people do not want to be taking photos with other no. people unless they're friends at that point. No, and there was a lot of photos being taken in the room. I know there was a lot of people kind of jumping in photos. You can look on the websites mm -hmm. where you can see all the celebrities kind of posing together, and you always be like, who's that person? Who's that person? I'm surprised, honestly, with as big of a party that is, that Michael Rubin is videotaping and taking as many photos as he was to post on social media because I almost feel like then your celebrities don't feel as comfortable. So it's interesting. So Michael Rubin has these parties. It's a lot of new Hollywood, I guess you could say, and a lot of celebrities mm -hmm. there. But Guy Siri, who's Madonna's manager, he's one of the biggest managers out there, he throws a party after the Oscars, and you never hear about it. You never see photos or anything about this party. He's been doing it for years. And that's the difference of kind of like old Hollywood versus new Hollywood, mm -hmm. where old Hollywood throws these – Guy Siri throws parties all the time. And it's a lot more kind of movie star type people, but you don't see photos from that party. So it's fun. It's interesting how Michael Rubin throws a party – you see the photos out everywhere. Michael's in a lot of photos, but Guy Siri does the same thing. You don't see Guy in any of the photos. And in fact, you don't see any part photos from the party. That's not a dig at it's, Michael it's Rubin. Just, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's difference between new Hollywood and old Hollywood. Yep. All right, let's move okay. on. All right. Number one story of the week, Dex. Well, number one story of the week. Obviously everyone is talking about the Kyle and Maurizio getting a divorce, but they, you know, so it started off this week where it was like, oh, Kyle and Maurizio, they're getting divorced, they're split, all of this stuff. And then they released a statement saying, no, 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 we are not divorcing, that they may be apart right now or separated, but uh, that they're, they are not divorcing and that they, they're basically telling all the outlets like, back off. Let us do our thing and don't just start putting out all these fake stories. Um, so it says any claims regarding divorce are untrue. According to them, they said that they've had a rough year, the most challenging one of our marriage, but we both love and respect each other tremendously. And so they're like, don't speculate, don't jump to conclusions. There was other stories coming out that she was potentially dating um, Morgan Wade, the country singer. Um, I don't know where that's going. There's been a ton of photos of them hanging out and that's Kyle, by the way, and, and Morgan. Um, so I, I don't know, but and then there was a bunch of photos that they posted of them hanging out in some mountain town with the, the kids. And so do you think this is a cover up? Do you think that they are not doing good? Like, wh what are your thoughts on this? What do you read through the lines? I here? can't figure it out. I think it's interesting that, you know, they're saying there's no, they said there's no divorce, but there has been some issues in the marriage. I think everyone's just shocked because we always thought how perfect they were. Mm -hmm. um, they were like almost like the first family of the Housewife franchise because I think so many people, fans, sort of um, fell in love with Mauricio because he was he was always nice. He was always present. He was a good guy in business. He was always great to Kyle. But he also didn't take away from the show where he, he kind of was separate from the show. So he came in at the right time. So I think people were just so shocked that there might have been – some issues in the relationship now. You know, obviously, we heard that there's some rumors that there, you know, Kyle had a relationship with this person, Morgan Wade. Mm -hmm. I have you looked at this person, Morgan Wade? Yeah, she's a she's a country singer. She um, covered in tattoos, but they've like hung out quite a bit. I've seen them like working out the gym together, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so she's. Got I, 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 so I don't know what their relationship is. Um, yeah. You know, it's just funny because it's like I always see this. It's like you can't hang out with someone of the opposite sex. You can't hang out with someone of the same sex. You can't like you just can't hang out with anyone before people start claiming you're dating them. I don't know, but it looks like, you know, they just posted a photo, Kyle and Mauricio on Fourth of July. They're still together. And I think that was a big statement that kind of cleared the air a little bit saying, like, we're still out together. We're just we had some issues in our relationship this past year. Maybe it was communication stuff. And I, I wonder how the story actually even got out there and got to that part, that point, because there's some big outlets reporting that they were separating. And then they responded to clear. They're saying, you know, we're not divorcing. There was some trouble in our relationship, but I don't know what I think where I stand on this. 
That's crazy. I we got to talk about this next story. Sorry, I'm going to move on from that because the story just broke about Britney Spears getting slapped in the face. Dude, isn't this wild? It's this so bizarre. Is... But then it's not even the, the the crazy part about this is that there's a police report. So yeah, go on about this. So Britney Spears uh, uh, was allegedly assaulted on Wednesday in Vegas after a member of Victor. How do you say Victor's last name? Victor Wimanaya, Wimanaya. I just met the Women, guy. Victor Wimanaya. Yeah. Uh, he's that new like NBA phenom that everyone's yeah. been talking about. Uh, apparently, one of his security guards uh, backhanded her in the face, and uh, a police report was filed. But the incident went down at the at Catch Restaurant in the Aria Hotel at 8:30 p.m. She was there with Sam and two others, and they went to the restaurant for dinner, and she was swarmed by fans she, as she entered. There's there's video of her there, by the way. And then she, as she walked in, she spotted him and said, oh, she's a huge fan, and went over to talk to him and ask if she could take a, a photo together, and she tapped him on the back of the right shoulder, and um, TMZ was told that the director of his, his security team, um, I guess, turned around and instantly backhanded her, causing her to fall to the ground and knocking off her glasses. I guess she composed herself and went to her table. Um, I guess we're told our TMZ was told that the security guard came over to the table and apologized and said, you understand how it is when you're being swarmed by fans? And he apologized to Brittany and she accepted it. And then Brittany's security team spent time with Victor's security guard. And then afterwards, the team filed a police report with Mel- Metropolitan the Police Department alleging battery. So, that is a wild story to think like Brittany getting hit uh, by a security guard. That's nuts, dude. Yeah, and it's funny. Victor's going to have uh, – I'm lucky I met the guy before it got too crazy because the guy, he's seven foot five. He's he's huge. So it shows you what level – <sighs> I don't know. The guy is right now about to play in the NBA Summer League. It's his first season. He's the number one draft pick. Everyone's – the tickets are already sold out to go see him play. She sees him. The guy messed up, but Brittany's just uh, – But that's not you know what I didn't read in the story is that it didn't sound like Victor went over to talk to Brittany. Like you would think that if you found out like your security guard slapped Brittany Spears in the face – you would get up and you would go over and talk to her and be like, I am so sorry this happened. Like that would be your moment to kind of write things, you know, even if one of your dudes made a wrong move. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That seems weird I think we're going to learn about more. Her. Obviously Victor is probably going to have to put out a statement. He's going to be questioned about her, asked about it. Um, can you imagine just seeing if you're at another table and you see that whole you would just be in shock your your jaw would drop to the floor if you witnessed that happen it's wild people so are nuts crazy. uh that's our top 10 stories of the week thank you guys for uh watching on youtube if you're listening uh make sure you guys leave us a review i appreciate it. five star only we do the world rundown uh on fridays and then in the middle of the week we usually kind of ramble to each other we talk have a guest on but we always appreciate you guys listening to follow us on tiktok Instagram, private Facebook group called Off the Record. Um, I highly suggest you guys join it. Uh, follow me at, at Adam Glynn. Follow Dax at, at Dax Holtz. See you guys next week. Bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go.